What's happening? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, anticipation and hype is at an all-time high and we're giving you the last few Apple bites of info before the big A's announcement. Now, the Cupertino Kids announced the official invitation-only event will be held at company headquarters on October 4th. That's Tuesday at 10 a.m. and it's perfect timing since that's right after my Bikram yoga class. That's right, I'm flexible. And the special event is titled Let's Talk iPhone. Now, everyone's been waiting because there's still a lot of mystery surrounding what Apple will actually release at this event. According to 9to5Mac, new part numbers for a new iPhone, updated iPhone 4S, and iPod Touchies have already appeared in Apple's inventory system. The next-gen iPhone known as N94 in Apple's iOS SDK kit has appeared in Apple's inventory system and, according to them, packs an A5 dual-core processor, a Qualcomm Gobi baseband chip for GSM and CDMA compatibility with an 8-megapixel camera and 1 gig of RAM. Now, they also report two products with the N90A part number that have appeared and are believed to be black and white models for a modified 8-gig iPhone 4 that might be the new low-end budget iPhone. The current iPhone 4's part number is known as N90. Now, three iPod Touch models with part numbers N81A have appeared and they're believed to be the rumored white iPod Touches since N81 represents the current black iPod Touch and that could point to just a cosmetic change with the same 8, 32, and 64 gig options alongside the current black ones. So when can we expect the official launch so we can gather our lawn chairs and blankies and wait in long lines for over 10 hours without a bathroom break? Well, according to Boy Genius Report, AT&T employees have been blocked from taking any vacations during the first two weeks of October. Earlier this month, it was reported Sprint was doing the same. At the time of the show, the launch date is still up in the air, and none of my retail contacts have been notified of any official blackout period. Now, as we get closer, what other features might we expect in the next iPhone? According to Mako Takara, a China Unicom rep told onlookers during a keynote at Macworld Asia 2011 that the iPhone 5 will have HSPA Plus capabilities for faster high-speed data. Now, he also included this slide just to make sure people were paying attention. China Unicom was the first carrier to have the iPhone 4, so you've got to be wondering what that guy was smoking to publicly announce that. Probably the same thing that AT&T in the U.S. has been smoking since they've been marketing HSPA Plus as 4G all this time. Now, other revelations from 9to5Mac point to the biggest new feature in the next-gen iPhone called Assistant. It's the next evolution of voice control and based on their acquisition of the Siri Assistant. Now, it's all voice controlled and it will allow you to make appointments that are instantly added to your calendar, compose voice to text messages, and create reminders for buying that rash ointment you forgot about. It's still itchy. Now, the assistant will also be able to ask you questions for more details, just like a conversation. And if this is true, I won't need friends anymore. Now, we'll find out about the real facts on October 4th, but let's just tease you a little bit with what it might look like. The team at Ben MAT decided to do what no one else would and built a prototype iPhone 5 based on the CAD designs, case leaks, and mock-ups of the rumored, and let me remind you, non-existent iPhone 5. Now, look at how dramatically he reveals it Dude, stop staring at me like that. And I'm still impressed, but awkwardly blown away by watching an Asian guy really fluent in German. Und von dem iPhone Channel Ben M bei auf Giga.de. Now the prototype was machined from a solid block of aluminum and treated with glass pearls. It even features the teardrop design. And honestly, that looks real nice, but I might as well have made a Loch Ness monster out of a sandwich. And if you're wondering, do people really care about this phone? All this hype, are people really going to make the switch? Well, 41% of mobile consumers plan to purchase the iPhone 5, and that's according to a study by Inmobi that covered users in the US, Mexico, and Canada. In addition to that, 52% of BlackBerry users plan to switch to iPhone, 51% of current iPhone users plan to upgrade to the 5 for their next purchase, and 27% of Android users would join the side of the computer fruit company. Now, also, 50% of all those people surveyed are planning to upgrade within the next six months, and those numbers are scary. But it's Apple that might be a little scared after Amazon rocked the tech world with their Kindle Fire announcement that's sure to change the tablet game. The Kindle Fire is a 7-inch LCD screen tablet that's based on the RIM Playbook's design, it will run Amazon's own custom UI on top of Android. There's no webcam or microphone or 3G, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's 199. 
Amazon is one of the few companies that has the content library with movies, music, books, and magazines to support a content consumption device like the tablet. And although it's not directly competing with the iPad, it instantly elevated itself to the best Android tablet. And what's the general consumer going to do this holiday season when they look at an iPad for $4.99 or a Kindle Fire for $1.99? It will be a very interesting holiday to see how it plays out, but kudos to Kindle, and it'll only get more interesting when they release future hardware and a larger tablet. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show, but we'll find out all the new goodies Apple is dropping on us on next week's show. Email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com with your reactions to Apple's announcements. I'm Brian Tong. We'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the Apple.